Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today we are returning with the final Premier League video of the season as we're going to be going over our full table predictions from the beginning of the season and also stick around for the end as we're going to take a look at how we finished up in the predictions league. So let's jump into what we predicted for the Premier League table right at the beginning of the season. So guys if you don't remember we did do a video back in I think August time last year. I did a little prediction of how I thought the table would end come the end of the season so we're just going to quickly sort of go over that have a look at my terrible takes as I don't think I got many teams in the correct position so starting with the bottom three you can see we had Bournemouth, Fulham and Everton to go down of which none of them went down so apologies to uh, fans from those teams obviously Everton were very very close to staying up on the final day and finishing in 17th. Uh, Bournemouth they also survived finishing 15th which is pretty respectable um, despite losing to Everton on the final day. Pretty much every person that you would have spoken to at the beginning of the season, pundits, football fans, anyone had Bournemouth to finish bottom. What a tremendous job Gary O'Neill has done there. And then Fulham, I mean what a season for them. A lot of people forget that they're actually newly promoted this year finishing in the top half in 10th place in the end great season for them and what a great job Marco Silva has done so we didn't get any of the three teams um, to go down correct and I don't think we did very well in the next sort of bottom half of the table either so we'll work our way up where 17th we had Leeds United I thought they would have enough to stay up this year obviously finished in 19th in the end in 16th, we did have a correctly placed team in Nottingham Forest. I predicted at the start of the season that they would stay up and they stuck with Steve Cooper and managed to get the job done. I thought it would be by the skin of their teeth, but they did manage to secure it in 16th. And then in 15th place, we had Southampton. So I'd actually put them relatively high up. But in fact, it was their South Coast rivals, Bournemouth, who ended up facing in 15th so really good season as I've mentioned for Bournemouth but for Southampton everyone sort of knew they were relegated for quite some time so really disappointing for them uh, moving up the table in 14th I had Brentford who I thought might struggle this year but instead of just kicked on uh, finishing in ninth place in the end and just outside of the European places it was West Ham who finished in 14th place and I thought they'd have a much better season but they had a bit of European hangover at the start of the year I think they'll be back to challenging in the top half of the table next season though they've been much better in this second half in 13th place we had another correctly positioned team with Wolverhampton Wanderers obviously they started the season and were down the bottom really struggling weren't scoring any goals but since Lopetegui went in they've looked a much better side and they've been much more comfortable I'm not really sure on Wolves next year it's a tough one it depends how they recruit um, but they've got a really good manager at the moment so they could potentially push on but they do need some better recruitment in the summer in 12th place you can see I actually had Leicester City who I'm still sort of surprised that they went down their, their squad is just way too good to have been relegated but these things happen in football of course in real life it was Chelsea who finished 12th no one would have had Chelsea to finish 12th if anyone in the world predicted them to finish 12th before a ball was kicked then that is crazy I call time travel <laughs> but yeah we had Leicester to finish in 12th um, who ended up in 18th but in 11th place we did have another correctly placed team with Crystal Palace so I got them spot on they actually finished above Chelsea which is pretty remarkable so fair play to Palace what a job Roy Hodgson did uh, since returning to the club towards the end of the season but moving into the top half of the table where I think most people would have had pretty similar predictions um, we had Brighton in 10th place who actually ended up finishing in a Europa League spot up in 6th. 10th uh, was of course uh, occupied by Fulham who again a lot of people had to finish down the bottom of the table. In 9th place we of course had Aston Villa. I thought they would kick on this year and for a period of time they were sort of stuck in mid-table and then when Emery went in went on a really good run and then ended up finishing in seventh place in a conference league position so we were only two positions out there and Newcastle were in eighth place in our predictions of course what a season they have had under Eddie Howe don't think anyone predicted them to do this well so quickly without really spending a huge amount of money that you know 
people will say, yeah, okay, they didn't spend a huge amount. They did, they did spend money on Alexander Isak, but other than that, they didn't really go overboard with their signing. So what a job Eddie Howe and his team have done at Newcastle, taking them into the Champions League for next year. Into the European places, you can see, as I've mentioned previously, West Ham we had in seventh. They did struggle playing European football as well as the Premier League. They, they were safe in the end pretty comfortably. Um, reached the magical 40 points, but I think next year they might be a, a bit higher. And then I had the traditional top six um, occupying those six top spaces with Manchester United in sixth, who obviously leapfrogged um, Newcastle at the end of the season and managed to finish third. So I think kind of fair play to Ten Hag like to get into the top four, but he did kind of capitalise on the fact that Liverpool, Spurs and Chelsea were really poor this season. Uh, did win the Carabao Cup, of course, and potentially could have the FA Cup in the trophy cabinet before the end of the season. I think it's a good season for United, but it's not quite where they want to be. I obviously had them to finish in sixth, so I thought they would be a little bit further down. But fair play, they managed to secure Champions League football for next year. And then in fifth place, we had Arsenal, of course, the closest challengers to Manchester City this year. It's been such a weird season. Like, I don't think anyone would have really predicted um, Arsenal in second, Newcastle fourth, Liverpool outside the top four, Spurs outside the top seven. It's crazy. And obviously Chelsea down in 12th. We had Arsenal to finish fourth. They were, of course, second and did. Uh, run at Manchester City at the closest so we didn't do particularly well with any of those predictions for the teams in the top eight and then this is probably one of the worst takes of all I had Spurs to finish in fourth ended up in eighth on the final day but missed out on any sort of European football despite being in the top four for the majority of the campaign but of course they kind of need to rebuild and go again next year people unsure as to whether Harry Kane will still be there. It's going to be a crazy summer and beginning to the new season as it is every year. Obviously Poch has now been announced as Chelsea manager. It'll be interesting to see what business they get done over the summer and whether they will be able to compete again next year. Speaking of terrible takes, I had Chelsea in third and you know what? I think we potentially would have been closer to third if we'd stuck with Thomas Tuchel, who knows what would have happened, but I think the, the decision to sack him, despite you know whatever was going on in the background of the club, was just a crazy decision. And the, the key moment that kind of sticks out for me is the game that Chelsea played Spurs at Stamford Bridge at the beginning of the season, and Spurs scored a last minute goal to level it up at Tool. I don't know why, that just feels like it was the turning point for me. As a Chelsea fan, obviously you can kind of um, delve a bit deeper into it. For me, that feels like the major turning point in the season. And as most people thought, I had Liverpool in second and the closest challenger to Manchester City. But of course, that wasn't the case. It was Arsenal who ran the closest. Liverpool struggled for most of the season, did pick up their form towards the end of the year and finished in fifth in a European spot. And it was, of course, Manchester City who ended up being crowned champions once again. That is what I did think the table would end as. We had a couple of teams that finished in the correct positions that we predicted. So Nottingham Forest, Wolves and Crystal Palace, I believe, being the only ones. And a few teams that were a couple of places out. But as I mentioned, it was a crazy season with Arsenal in second. No one really saw that coming at the start of the year. Newcastle in the top four. Liverpool, Spurs and Chelsea having such woeful seasons and Leicester as well I don't think many will have had them to go down after being Premier League champions and winning the FA Cup just a few years ago so there it is guys there is our final uh, table prediction we're going to jump over to the predictions website where of course if you have been following we were making a charge for the top 10 let's go and see if we made it in or not so there you have it then guys there is the final table for the head-to-head -head, uh, predictions for the 2022-23 season and you can see we sneaked into the top 10 finishing in ninth thanks to a really good final day set of predictions my dad finished in fifth just outside of the money on goal difference in the end two points off second 
but um, the guy who won it had a three point gap in the end so did probably deserve to win it over the course of the season but it was pretty close I'm really annoyed that I wasn't up here if I'd been a little bit more consistent in the first half of the season before the World Cup we may have potentially challenged uh, this top top side of the table but as you can see we did actually manage to win the final fixture of the season with 15 points there was a lot of people who actually struggled um, considering all the games were on at once not that that really makes a difference but a lot of people on six points or below you can see almost half of the table finishing with six or below and there is a breakdown of our predictions a couple of really good results in there um, so the ones that stand out for me, Villa beating Brighton was a great shot. There were a few who had 2-1, but as I mentioned in the Fixture 38 video, Bright, um, sorry, Villa, Villa just had more to play for and I felt that they needed the win more than Brighton who had obviously already secured uh, European football. Chelsea Newcastle at 1-0 was also a decent shout and the same for Crystal Palace against Forest. And then we went for Deitch Ball with a 1-0 Everton win. I'm I'm kind of annoyed that my um, joker didn't come in for Man United 2, Fulham nil, as Fulham did obviously go a goal up. But a lot of jokers were ruined by Liverpool's 4-4 draw with Southampton at St Mary's, what game that was. But that will do it guys, there is the final predictions table, we will of course be back for the brand new season. I will probably do another table prediction before the season starts. And then of course we will be back with the first fixture of the new season um, on the predictions website. We'll be doing it again next year. So if you guys have enjoyed sort of following how we have done, we will be back as I say next year to continue with that. But in the meantime, our Friday slot on the channel has now opened up. So that does mean the return of some Call of Duty zombies as I have mentioned previously. So from next Friday, we'll have the return of zombies and we've got a pretty cool video lined up. So make sure to keep an eye out for that on the channel next Friday. That will do it for our predictions for this season. If you have enjoyed guys, please do drop a like and subscribe to the channel. It really does mean a lot and it helps push the videos to others. But that will do it for today, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.